He's able to meet the need in your life and mine. All right, uh, kids, you can go. I'm sorry, I should have let you play there, Lou. Y'all go ahead, kids. Don't don't trample nobody. All the little kids are going to have their class tonight. We'll be staying in here, uh, kid, big kids staying in here this evening. Amen, amen. All right. I always tell them, don't run, don't run, don't run. Amen. All right, now, I'm not going to I'm not going to have you turn to any certain scripture right now, but I sure will in a minute. So get your Bibles out. You're going to need it. And uh, we're going to be turning to several scriptures here tonight. I've been getting uh, a lot of comments about our Wednesday night services on healing. Unbelievable. Uh, people way off in other states uh, saying stuff about it. And I appreciate that. Uh, thank the Lord for it. Okay, we got the candy girls over here, ain't we? Candy girls and boys. Um, they're, they're trying to raise us some money to go to camp, y'all. So they got Reese cups. You got a dollar. I got an appetite. Perfect scenario for the Lord in here. I believe Reese cups are ordained to go in my office. You got a dollar. They got, uh, you know, brand new roller skate. I got the key. All right. Let's all uh, get ready now. We're going to study a little bit. Crazy old song from a long time ago. Crazy. I didn't understand that song. But let's uh, get our Bibles open now. You're going to need them. And um, we, we to, to go over what we have, have studied this far. And uh, just briefly, very, very briefly, if you've been, been here, we've been studying what the Bible says about divine healing or healing in general. What well, we now, the truth is all healing is divine. Nobody would ever get better for nothing if it wasn't for the Lord. Is that right? But sometimes it's instantaneous. Sometimes it's, like we would say, miraculous. Sometimes God uses medicine. Sometimes God, you know, there's, did, did you know there's certain, you can make certain changes in your lifestyle that can heal, that God can use to heal you some night? With high blood pressure, start changing diet, exercise. That's what they all say out there in the world, diet and exercise, diet and exercise. Won't cure everything, but it, it sure can help some things, like cholesterol, blood pressure, stuff like that. Now, you've got to breathe. You've got to breathe oxygen. You've got to breathe, and you've got to do something that makes you sweat. You've got to. You, you've got to sweat. And if you're not able, go out and sit out on a hot day like this and put a big heavy coat on, toboggan, Gloves and everything, but you have got to sweat. You'll stay sick all the time. And even worse, you've got to sweat it out. Get your sauna or go, go and you know, turn the heat on in your car on high and sit there for two hours and just, just let it run down you because that gets the toxin and pulling out of truth. Truth. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Huh? I'm fine. How are you? Yeah, I remember you. Of course I do. You're the lady that helped me out the other night on this Bible study. We're going to do it again, okay? Now listen, listen. you got to, uh, I don't know how I got off on that sweating, but that's, that's something about making yourself, helping yourself be healthy. That'll be another discussion. But we studied healing in relation to the Jew. Exodus 4, the nation of Israel began with a sign. Since then, Jews always had to have one. 1 Corinthians 1.22, Jews require a sign. There was just something about that nation. And Noah, I mean, I mean Moses, put his hand in here, heal leprosy, put his hand in here, heal miraculously as a sign to the Jew. And we went through all of that. Then we went through uh, the next time about healing in relation to anyone. Sometimes people get healed, listen to me, who are not right with God and think they're right because they got healed. That's in, uh, if you wouldn't hear, 1 Corinthians, I'm um, 1 Kings 13, where that wicked king made Israel to sin 13 times, and he asked the prophet to pray for him, and the prophet prayed for him, and he got healed. Now, how many times you heard people say, are you a Christian? Oh, heart attack, and somebody was with me. You ever heard people say that? Sometimes people get since they got well, that God's with them. That's not necessarily true. Not necessarily true. So that does happen. That's 1 Kings 13. You got to get your Bible right. You got to get it right. And you're going to get that here at this church. I don't claim to be nothing special, but you're going to get it right if you keep coming here. Look at here. 
Sometimes God uses medicine to heal people. That's Isaiah 38 and verse 20 and 21. Sometimes also, no matter how many medicines you use, you don't get healed. That's Jeremiah 46, 11. Sometimes there's a case in the Bible where a man only went to doctors and not to God and died. That's 2 Chronicles 16, 12. 2 Chronicles 16, 12. Man just went to the doctors and he sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians, so he died. And then we see that the Apostle Paul took a registered physician, Luke the Beloved, a doctor with him the last years of his life. Then we noticed, then we noticed, and this is what people don't get. Listen carefully to what I'm getting ready to tell you. If you don't get this, you will never make sense out of the Bible. It'll just be a mangled up mess of spaghetti and you can't get it figured out. And you'll wind up believing false doctrine. I am, I am, I'm literally, I'm literally disappointed and surprised at the shallow lack of Bible knowledge that the TV preachers have. Well, they, they get in there all the time and quote, I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee, which is not even to me and you. Not even to us. That was him talking to the nation of Israel in the Old Testament. I will put none of the diseases on you. How many times you heard of Watch these guys on TV. Oh, I will put none of these diseases on you. Now, you really believe that? So none of the diseases of the world can ever come on a Christian? You believe that? It's not true. It's not true. Now, can God keep disease coming? Absolutely. See, the second you start talking like that, somebody says, oh, oh, he don't believe the Bible. No, I just believe it right. I believe it. I just believe it right. You got to rightly divide it. You can't say, I've heard people get them to church and say, everything in the Bible's to me. Well, you better bring you an animal sacrifice next Sunday if it is, because God told them to. He didn't tell you to. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly divide it. There's divisions. There's divisions. And if you don't get them divisions right, I, 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 I'll tell you one. I'll tell you one. First, third John verse 2. You have ever heard of healer on TV? Get on, and they love this. Their favorite verse, beloved. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul. Have you ever heard that verse quoted on on TV? That's their favorite verse. They have no idea what the verse is even saying. Now, did God say that? Did God say that? To, if God said that to me and you, beloved, I wish above all things. Above everything else, heaven, hell, eternity, above everything else, that you prosper and be in health. Believe that. I, anybody, how could you believe that? If the Lord, more than anything else, wants us to prosper and be in health, more than anything else, that's not true. It's not true. Now, it does please the Lord when we prosper and he blesses us. What about people that are poor and don't have nothing? You know, do you know that there's preachers who preach that and say one, one guy went to a healing meeting one time. He's out there and this guy, used, he's in a wheelchair and he'd go to all the healing revivals and all the tent revivals trying to get healed. He never did get healed, every one of them. They always healed a bunch of stuff you couldn't see. You know, this pain in my neck and this, you know, and I... It, that was awful one time. They had this girl up there and he said, God's going to heal this. How many of y'all want to see a miracle? Come now. I'm not making fun of people. It just, I'm telling you what's going on. This girl was cross-eyed. And, uh, you know, she's standing there like this. <laughs> I'm not making fun of nobody, but he was like this. And then he heals her. Well, you know how easy that'd be to fake? <laughs> I could just cross-eyed right then. I'm always afraid to do it, afraid they'll get hung like that. But that's what mom used to say. You do that, your eyes get hung. But the guy puts his hand on her and said, be healed, and then she's straight. It's always something like that. Always I saw this gourd, this tumor go down and disappear. Now, can the Lord do that? Absolutely. Does he do that? Sure he does. There's been tons of cases where people had cancer and were supposed to go to a surgery or had a tumor and went to the doctor for surgery and found it wasn't there. Of course the Lord can do that stuff. But this guy, he went around, went around, went around in a wheelchair, never did get healed, never did get healed, never did get healed. And he said that he went to one of them meetings one time, 
the guy took up five offerings. Big long service, about three hours long, five offerings. You ever been to a service where they take up so many offerings? First he got up there and he said, now, now in this tent, in this crusade for Christ and this healing revival, we need some song books and somebody's printed up these song books and we got no song books and they're great songs and, and they're only two, $2 a piece or whatever like that. $2 a piece. Who will give $2? They got, they got that out of the way. And then, uh, uh, kind of, uh, a little bit later, something else come up and they took up an offering for it. And then they took up the regular offering. Well, it makes three. And then the guy got up there and went into this big long spill about how God wants to bless you. And the way he wants to bless you is for you to give, uh, you plant a, a seed faith money. And you want me to translate it for you? Basically what he is saying is, if all you people will give me your money, you'll get rich. That's what he's saying. And they didn't say it like that, but that's what was being done. You give me. And then, and then he started talking about this demon of poverty. Now, I've read the Bible through a bunch. I never read about that demon of poverty. There'd be a closer one to demon being rich than there would be on poverty. <laughs> the, the poor, it ain't sin to be poor. It ain't sin to be rich, but it could be. But it ain't a sin to be poor, but it could be if you're lazy and won't do nothing. But he said, we're going to break the back. How many of you heard the preacher say, Rod Parsley and all them? I used to like to listen to Rod Parsley as far as a preacher. He's right up there where my family is. And I mean, he preached. Maybe we're going to break the back of poverty. We'll break the back of poverty. And these poor people I done took up three offerings to break the back of poverty to get four offerings out of poor people. And they think God's going to bless them because they give all their money. I mean, I'm don't, I'm not on the verge of blaspheming. Don't worry about me. Uh, I'm I'm telling you the truth. There ain't no curse of poverty. Uh, uh, you you got to be careful about them generational curses and people's talk junk like that. Now it is true. It is true that kids suffer for the sins of the parents. That is true. We all see it all the time. You sit on bus route every week. Kids are suffering because the parents won't do right. And it is also true that many, many times when a man's a drunk or a, uh, some, that the son will repeat that behavior. But it ain't any genes necessarily. It's not. My daddy was an alcoholic. I'm not. I've never drunk in my life. You can't. You can't say. I'm going to break this generational curse from now, and all my family's going to be right. The, the, there's no thing is that I'm, I'm not saying that that curses don't come on down on children because they do. But it's not like I'm going to bind the spirit of poverty. There, there's no such thing as that in the Bible. How many of you ever heard a preacher say that? You, I'm going to break the curse back of poverty, stuff like that. You, you listen to them once in a while, you'll, you'll hear that. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever. Now, you know what they mean? They mean he works the same and I'm the same as them apostles. That ain't what that verse said. It didn't say he works the same. It said he is the same. He don't always work the same. Now, if you feel a resistance to what I'm saying, it's because you, you were taught something back there somewhere and, and you got it in your head and you're afraid to let go of it because you're afraid maybe God... but. Listen to the truth, people. Listen to the truth. Listen to the truth. I'm telling you the truth. God don't always work the same with every group and every generation. That's, that's why we don't build an ark. That's why we don't bring animal sacrifices. That's why we don't. He, you say, well, he's the same yesterday. Of course he is. I got pain in my ear. Yo, I'm sorry. I, I thought I washed it out. Got my hair too. I can feel it right there, a little white piece, something right there. And when I paint, I paint more than what I'm painting. <laughs> I paint myself and everything around me. Uh, I'm not as bad as right, really. Where's he at? Not as bad as, where did he go? There he is, not as bad as him. Uh, I give him a paintbrush and he just went like that. Threw it on there. She's a good painter. That girl right there, Lily. anybody needs any paint done? Good painter. And uh, he's a good Swimmer, that's about it. No, I'm just kidding. But anyway, 
they've been with us since Sunday night and, and swam, and I made them paint. Uh, but anyway, uh, they, the Lord don't do that. Now, it's so sad to see that, that a TV preacher is a novice. That's, that's a beginner uh, in the scripture. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Well, okay, we got it, buddy. All right. Now, I'm going to talk about this just a second, and then I'm going to end up, I'm going to have to finish this next week, Lord willing. Um, you got to get this. And if you don't get this, you'll never understand the Bible right. You got to understand God dealing. There's three groups of people in the Bible Jew, Gentile, church. Everything God says to one of them three groups. And to understand the Bible, you got to go, number one, who's talking? Number two, who's he talking to? Number three, the context in which it appears. That's a good rule to go by. Number one, who's talking? God. Number two, who's he talking to? Jew, Gentile, or church. You know what me and you are? We ain't Jew or Gentile. We're church. In Christ, there's neither Jew nor Gentile. See? We're, we're, we're church. Outside of Christ, there's Jew and Gentile. There are people that are Jews. There are people that are Gentiles. In Christ, there's, there's neither spiritually speaking, and we are the spiritual children of Abraham, not the literal children. That's where you get messed up in your theology. We are the spiritual children of Abraham. You say, well, how do you know it's just spiritual? How do you know we're not literally like Israel was in the Old Testament? Because in Christ, there's neither male nor female, right? But we are male and female. So in Christ, we the promises of Israel, spiritual seed. We are Abraham's spiritual seed. Jews are Abraham's physical seed. Jews were, were God's earthly chosen people. God the Father and Israel were married. God the Son is engaged to the church. We are his bride-to-be. We will one day marry him. So John the Baptist would be the best man at the wedding. Another study. He, he said, he, what was John the Baptist? Was he Old Testament or New Testament? He's right between. He said, he that hath the bride, Jesus, is the bridegroom. He's the one that got the bride. But the friend of the bridegroom standeth by and hands the ring, please. You know, and all that kind of stuff. That's a picture. That's what John did in his ministry. And then he checked out. Now, we are engaged. If somebody says, we are the bride of Christ, the truth is we are the bride to be. We are espoused. We are engaged right now. One day, we'll marry him. And, buddy, when that day comes, our bodies will be made perfect God's going to make your new body out of your old body, and it'll never have sickness again. That brings me to something. Now, watch this. A.D. 50. A.D. 50. Jesus went back to heaven in A.D. 33, 32-ish, 33-ish, 4-ish, 15 went back to heaven. There's no Bible except Old Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John had not been wrote. Acts was happening. Maybe my, maybe some of them might have been, but they hadn't been passed around. Everybody didn't have one. Acts was happening, so there wasn't no Acts. There wasn't no epistles. The church itself was here, but they hadn't even figured it out yet. That's why Acts is a very dangerous place to base your doctrine because it's progressive. It's a bridge. It's, it's a progressive revelation. Like uh, That's why you say one time over here they, they, they believed and got the Holy Ghost and was baptized, and then they got, the, 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 got baptized and didn't get the Holy Ghost until after they got baptized, and then they got the Holy Ghost before they got baptized, and they got baptized and didn't even know what the Holy Ghost was. That's why you see all that stuff there in the Acts. It's, it's unfolding. It's unfolding. You couldn't get it fair. That, you can start five different denominations over what I just said, and every one of them got Scripture to back it up. That's why you have to get the whole thing and get it figured out. Now, now, that's why they said, well, don't, don't everybody get baptized in the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues? No, they sure don't. Do all, do all work of miracles? No. Do all have the gifts of healing? No. Do all speak with tongues? No. And if somebody speaks with tongues, that don't make them a bit more spiritual than somebody that don't. You know how I know that? John did no miracle. And he's filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb, brother. 
You ain't going to get no more right than he was. <laughs> uh, but, but stuff like that irritates people. Well, I know I went to a meeting and I know what I saw. This church is not about what you saw. This church is about teaching the Bible. And if you're interested in learning the Bible, that's what you're going to get. It's all right to see something. But if it don't line up with the book, junk it. I don't care if Brother Danny said it. If, if I looked down and I said, uh, I work three miracles in the name of Allah. You say, he's lost his mind. Put him over in his room over here. We've been had reserved for him for the last few years. That's right. That's right. I mean that. I mean that. If your grandma seen 13 angels, 12 angels, come in her bedroom at night and gave her the revelation that she is, a, is, the, is the, one of the two witnesses, I love grandma, bless her heart. Some of them sweet, some of them live right. Some of them some old holy women. I love them and I respect them. But they have not one clue what they're talking about. She is not one of the two witnesses. Some of them think they are. Some of them think they are. You say, well, I wish above all things that you must prosper and be in hell. You mean tell me it's God's will for no Christian ever to get sick and always to prosper? Well, everybody got out of God's will, I reckon, because they all get sick and die. Everybody does. You know why you get sick and die? Because you've got that seed of sin inside you. And that don't leave when you get saved. You're a good man living in a bad body. You see, your flesh ain't even born again, y'all. Your spirit is. When you get saved, you are born of the spirit. And a new man, Christ in you, the hope of glory, this flesh don't change one bit. When the Lord comes, then the flesh, we get our new body. Then our new body. I'll illustrate that with the world in a minute. My goodness, there's so much of this, I can't get it all in. But um, if your flesh got saved, and I, I had my finger cut off, when I got saved, my finger would come back if the flesh is perfect. It's not. You, you mess around and get your hand cut off, something like that. You don't grow one when you get saved. Your flesh ain't perfect. Your flesh is sinful. You got sin nature inside you. And I got news for you, buddy. When you get saved, that old nature is still in there. Is anybody in here to look at me with a straight face and say, your old nature is gone? <laughs> You are the most self-deceived nut I've met in a long time. This guy one time, he he's right now with his preacher and he's taking him out to eat. And they, they believed in sinless perfection, you know, that you, you, nobody sins. After you get saved, you don't sin. You cannot sin. According to 1 John, you can't sin. If that's our flesh, so it says you can't sin. And, and the guy said, no, and he said, no, no, she ain't sinned in 13 years. And he said, no, I ain't sinned in 15 and the little kid in the back said, Daddy. <laughs> See, there's your truth teller right there. There's your truth. He knows Daddy'd sin. Now, should we strive for sinless perfection? Absolutely. You ought to fight sin with everything in you. Claim this. Uh, uh, I think me and uh, Brother Chris, we texted a little bit about that the other day. Something, I don't even remember what we was texting about, but something like, we ought to fight that old nature every day. That's why Paul said, I die daily. Uh, but he said, boy, that which is in me, I want to do good and I don't. And I try to do good and I don't. And I try, don't want to do bad and I do. And I don't do what I want to do. And I do do what, what I do do. <laughs> and, I, and I'm all messed up. Uh, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Don't kid yourself, people. You're dragging this old nature around, and you know why? You know how you know it sins? Because it dies. If it didn't sin, it would never die. Now, why is the false teaching and healing so popular? Two things. Number one, when people get sick, they'll do anything and get well. I'm telling you, my day's coming and your day's coming. You'll grab at anything when you're hurting bad enough. You will. You will. It's human nature. Self-preservation is your first, first uh, natural instinct. Self-propagation is your second. And self-gratification is your third. The three greatest instincts you have. Number one. Preserve yourself at all costs. I'll do anything to stay alive. That's, that's natural. Number two, self-propagation. That's your sexual desires. Stuff. That's powerful desire. You don't, you don't fool with that. And number three is self-gratification. Make your flesh comfortable. Give it what it wants. 
And you got to fight against all three of them, man. You got to fight against all three of them. Now, why is the false healing t- uh, so popular? And I'll tell you why. Basically, it's this. They believe it's in the atonement. They believe it's in the atonement. What I mean by that, the scripture in Isaiah, by stripes, we're healed. How many of you have ever heard a preacher quote that scripture? Raise your hand. By stripes, we're healed. Of course you have. Of course you have. That's in the Bible. And Isaiah prophesied the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Uh, uh, he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. And by his stripes, you were healed. You know what I've heard preachers? I, I listened to Andrew Womack and and uh, just once in a while, just for five minutes each, just to keep up with what they're saying. And uh, I, I listened to, to um, uh, Benny Hinn used to, and Paul White, and Joyce Meyer, and all of them. Just once in a while, check out what they're saying. And I'm not, I'm not uh, trying to be a smart guy. I just want to know. You know, I'm a preacher. I should know what's what's going on in the religious world. And uh, I do. And uh, they, they're always saying. By his stripes, you're healed. And here's what they're saying now. All right, friend, you're already healed. You just don't know it. You just got to claim it. For by his stripes, you were, past tense, healed. So we're already healed. As soon as you get sick, you're already healed. You just got to claim it. You, you, You get what I'm saying? Let's turn back there in Isaiah 53. Let me show you where that comes from. Take your Bible and turn to Isaiah 53. And you're going to see all I'm telling you, it all fits together. Don't get mad at me. And please don't go out here and say, Brother Danny, don't believe in healing. I do. I just don't believe in healers. Not in this not this way. You're not an apostle. I'm not an apostle. And if you know somebody that healed people like the apostles healed them, if you'll write me a letter or send me their phone number, I want to meet them. And I'll pay their way to come here and heal Gail. And healed Brother Joey, and I'm healed by people. We'll pay your expenses to come here and do that. If you can do it. If you can't, hush. Shut up. You can't. If you can do it, do it. Put up a shut up, right? Now here's what they say. They say, yeah, but they've got to have enough faith. They've got to have enough faith. Really? What for dead? Them dead people. Peter's shadow passed over people. He didn't even ask them to have any faith. I tell you, Gooden. Well, hold your finger there in Isaiah 53. Here's your Gooden. Jesus is out there one time. And all these men come up to crucify him. You know what I'm doing to you tonight? I'm showing you how the Bible divided right. I don't claim to know everything. But I mean, I've been studying this 45 years. Look, here's Jesus. He's getting ready to be crucified. All these men come up to crucify him. Lanterns, Judas among them, wicked people. And Peter doing what a man want to do to protect his Savior, goes like this and goes, and slices the guy's right ear, this ear. So if Peter's, if he's right-handed and he gets his right ear, he going he went whoop like that. You know, uh, he was trying to hit his head. And God had mercy and pushed the thing over the ear off. Then Jesus reached down and touched an ear, jumped up on that guy's head, and it quit bleeding and everything. The guy's name was, somebody tell me, Malchus. How much faith did Malchus have? <laughs> he came out there to kill Jesus. Did Jesus say, according to your faith, Malchus? Did Malchus go home and say, guess what, honey? Glory to God, the Lord blessed me today. I got healed. No. He's a wicked man come to kill Jesus. I bet he had some thoughts that night. <laughs> I'd like to know what went through his mind, buddy, when he went home. Ugh. You ever ran out to kill somebody and they heal your ear? That'd be tough, boy. Jesus is known for doing stuff like that. He'll love you no matter how mean you are to him. Woo! Uh, but you know what? Uh, he, he healed old Malchus. Ear. Malchus had no faith. None that we know of. Peter didn't say, to him. Only believe, only believe all things are possible. That's a good song that might encourage somebody and everything. I'm not, I'm not saying it's wrong, but that you're trying to pump up. You're trying to work it up, work up some faith. And you get the organ playing. And the Bible said, 
you can be healed. Dun, dun, dun. They didn't have none of that stuff. I kind of like it. Really? I do. Uh, but uh, but they, they didn't have that. It's not emotions. The Lord just did it. And you know what? You know what I noticed reading my Bible? Let me show you something. I'm going to get off the subject. Keep your finger there. And, uh, keep your finger there. And uh, uh, look at, uh, oh, my goodness. I hope I can find this. Uh, John 18. John 18. I read it today. It just so happened that was in my Bible reading. John 18. Look at John 18. When they really was getting ready to crucify the Lord. Look at John 18. Uh, and when they had him there in Pilate's judgment hall, Peter denied the Lord. Boy, Peter really messed up his testimony, man. Look, at John 18, 26. John 18, 26. And one of the servants of the high priest, this important man, look at this, being his kinsman whose ear Peter cut off. Say it. Didn't I see him in the garden with him? It was Malchus's cousin or whatever, he's kin to him. So in between there, he had, man, I heard this guy, Peter, I don't know who he is, cut my cousin's ear off. Man, if I ever see him again, and then there he is in the cousin denying the Lord, and he was his near kinsman. He, he said, that's that guy cut my cousin's ear off. I don't like you. I don't know. You know, some of them, some of them people, some of them preachers in the Old Testament, I wonder if you'd have went up to Bathsheba's cousin and asked him what he thought about David, what she'd say, what they'd say. I wonder if you went to, what's the guy's name? Uh, Uriah. If you'd have met Uriah the Hittite's mother and said, do you know a guy named David? Yes, I do. You know, he's a man of God. Man of God, my foot. If I ever see him, I'll slap his head off. I, ain't, I wouldn't walk across the street to hear him break. He had my son killed. That's right. That's right. There's all I get. Noah drunk. Abraham lying about his wife. I bet he had a great testimony of some of them kings. And, 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 uh, but that's off subject. But look at here. Here's his cousin. Now look back in Isaiah 53. Could not, y'all. We're out of time. Uh, Isaiah 53. Look at uh, uh, verse 5. Verse 5. This is a prophecy of Christ dying on the cross. But he was wounded for our transgression, right? Glory to God. He was bruised for our iniquities. They beat him on, before they put him on the cross. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. You say right there, it says it, Brother Danny. They put those stripes on his back. Cancer, heart failure, liver disease. With his stripes we're healed. That's absolutely right. But here's what they don't understand. They don't understand, and I'll pick this up next week, you don't get all the benefits of the atonement immediately when you get saved. Now that might sound like one little statement that's got a huge impact on understanding the Bible. The atonement was made on Calvary. You do not receive all the benefits of the atonement when you get saved. That, here's what they say. He died for our sins. He died for our sicknesses. That is true. But you don't get all the benefits of the atonement yet. That's why you don't get a new body. When you get your new body, you're in heaven, then all the other benefits will kick in. Then the millennium, all that's in the atonement. Now, you should understand that. When somebody says, well, see that right there? It says you were healed. It's because you ain't got enough faith. No, it's because you don't know what you're talking about. Now, we're going to talk next time about what to do when you do get sick and how to get healed. Does the Lord still heal? Yes. Will the Lord heal? Yes. Has he healed me? Yes. Have anybody in here the Lord's ever healed? Right? Hands all over the building. Of course you know. But you've got to understand it right. There ain't no apostles walking around down here healing people like the apostles did. And if you know one, give me his number, and we'll pay for him to come here and heal sick people in our church. Oh, by the way, when Jesus sent them out there to heal in Acts 10, you know what he told them? Take neither script nor purse. <laughs> Don't take up five offerings in one service. They couldn't even take no money with them. But that's sort of pushed aside. All right, I'm done. Let's stand. Don't miss Bible school. Uh, Saturday morning at 8, uh, 11 o'clock. Bus workers are going to leave here at 8.30. I can go pick up the
bring them. We'll meet at 11 o'clock. Classes for every age group. Come for a big day of fun. Hot dogs on the grill. Good time of fellowship. Okay? All right. Let's pray. and We'll be dismissed in uh, fellowship just a little bit. And be friendly in the Lord. Brother Randy, how about you dismiss us?